Hello everyone, Jackson Nautilus here. In this video, I'd like to talk about utilizing in-game systems to achieve significant results with minimal time investment. I like to call it casual grinding. The general idea here is to find all kinds of tips and tricks that would contribute to maximize how much money we are making or saving while we make MGP, level alternate combat crafting and gathering jobs, and general convenience. All in as little time and as efficient as possible. These are all my personal tips and tricks I've picked up since playing A Realm Reborn all the way through current content, which at this time is 6.28. So any of these methods can be updated depending on how they adjust systems and patches going forward. There are a few things to note here. Some of these methods require you to be at second lieutenant rank in your grand company. Additionally, any weekly activities I talk about reset every Tuesday morning at 3 a.m. EST, daily activities reset at 10 a.m. EST, and grand company specific daily activities reset at 3 p.m. EST. Additionally, there are some unavoidable spoilers through Shadowbringers, and I am going to have some slight spoilers for one of the Endwalker tribes that came out in 6.1. I'm trying to limit that as much as possible. It is only used to feature the tribe experience. So in no particular order, let's take a look at some of these tips and tricks. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about are Etherite tickets. Now, these are tickets that are given automatically to new players. It allows them to teleport for free. The good news is there is a way that veterans can get these tickets as well. You just have to have a little bit of investment in your grand company. So just like Maelstrom and Twin Adders, the Immortal Flames has a hunt board. Now uh, there is some requirements to unlock this. Uh, however, once you've unlocked the hunt board, you can go ahead and take your weekly Elite Mark bill. Now I've already completed mine for the week. But you see here, there is a 5,000 gil 100 allied seals reward each week. Now, the great thing about allied seals is this is a currency that can buy you quite a few interesting things, including Aetherite tickets. So here is your hunt billmaster right next to the hunt board. You go under allied seals other, and you'll find right at the top, ventures, and then Aetherite tickets. Now the nice thing is every week you do this elite hunt, that's, that's 20 tickets. Five allied seals per ticket. 20 tickets for 100 allied seals. So pretty lucrative. Uh, it gives you 20 free teleports per week, especially the way that teleport costs are going these days. Uh, for example, if we go to Far East, well, that's not quite. Try not to do any spoilers here. Um, but the really far away locations get really pricey really fast. I'm um, gonna avoid any of the spoiler locations, but there's locations in the game that cost over a thousand gil a piece, which is really expensive. Uh, either way, tickets, good news, doesn't matter how far, uh, it's free. Now, what's really, really nice is you can go in here and go under your open teleport settings here in the corner and you can actually specify when you want to use your etherite tickets. So for me, if the teleport is more than 200 gil, it automatically uses an etherite ticket. If it's under that threshold, uh, it will use gil instead. And there's different ways you can also filter this to use it to your convenience. So whatever works for you, uh, whatever you feel like, you know, gil wise you want to save, very, very effective. Now, there is a way for you to go ahead and accomplish this in Heaven's Ward as well. Um, that requires some additional quest completion, and I'll head over to Ishgard here in a second and show you where to find that. Alright, and here we are in Ishgard over by the Forgotten Knight, which is the inn. Right outside the inn is the Clan Hunt Board by Eustacia. And now this requires a little bit more questing to unlock, but once you do, you do have the same options as you did uh, on the other board, there, there are multiple levels of the clan mark builds instead of just the one 
over in Realm Reborn. However, it still gives you the Elite, which I've already taken for the week. Uh, once you've taken it, you can keep it for as long as you need to and eventually do it. Uh, the only downside of Heavensport is it takes a... Uh, these maps are quite larger. A Realm Reborn with flying uh, that was introduced after the fact. Uh, you can cover those areas pretty fast and find it, so you can get that 5,000 gil and 100 allied seals pretty fast. Uh, Heaven's Ward areas are between two to three times the size of Realm Reborn areas. So, a lot more of a needle and haystack situation. Again, it, your mileage may vary. If, if it's something you want to do, by all means, I don't do this weekly just because I feel like it, it takes a little bit more time that I'm willing to give. Anyway, Ardalan is here with Clan Centurio. So we go ahead and talk to him. We want to exchange and we'll see the Aetherite tickets for five of those Centurio, Centurio, I can't say the word, seals each. Uh, same as allied seals. So you can get an extra 20 per week by doing the Heavensward areas. Now let's talk about Grand Company seals. This is a pretty common currency that you'll find under your company seals with your common currency tab. <laughs> Go figure. Um, I have a maximum of 90,000 just because of the rank I'm at. However, what's really, really nice about Grand Company seals is it allows you to purchase some items that are pretty good. Uh, for example, over a material here, you can buy grade eight dark matter or seven or six, of course, if you're lower level. But 8 is the most recent expansion's repair items, which, you know, it gets pricey gill-wise, and if you have the seals, you can go and buy them at 600 apiece. If we go to the next lower category of ranks here, we're still under material, you'll find some very interesting items, including Glamour Prisms. For 200 seals, you can just straight up buy a Glamour Prism. Uh, this saves you a lot of money and time if you are buying them off the market board, which in most cases, you're buying them in entire stacks of 99, or making your own, which you can do, and that does save you some money, but the time investment is insane. Instead, buy them with Grand Company Seals. Now, where am I getting all these Grand Company Seals? Well, the good news is, right next door here is a Flame Personnel Officer. Now, if we go to this guy, we ought to want to undertake supply and provisioning missions, and we will find Expert Delivery. Now, Expert Delivery is where we're going to find all the items you've picked up in dungeons or you've gotten from your quick ventures or whatever you, you have on you. Most gear, Heavensward or above, so like level, I want to say it's like level 65 or so or above, that all gives you at least a thousand seals apiece. So, for example, in dungeons, I'll roll on everything. I'll greed if they're not for my class. I'll need if I'm available. And while I know some people look down on it, this is the easiest way to get seals. The easiest, absolutely. You just go in here, you turn them into the officer, it's a good opportunity for you to be like, hey, wait a second, what is this? And you can come on, take a look and see what something looks like. You know, nope, looks like trash, and turn that in for seals as well. Uh, it's really lucrative. You'll quickly cap out your 50K you start with, um, or 90K, uh, once you've gotten as far as I have to captain level. And of course, like I said, once you're done turning those items in, switch back over to your quartermaster and go ahead and pick up some of those glamour prisms. Now there is an alternative way to get those seals indirectly using poetics. So if you find yourself capping on poetics pretty frequently, holy crap, I'm capped on poetics. So this is a good opportunity for me to show you. Um, I'm going to teleport over to a location in Shadowbringers, which is the last expansion, and we're going to go buy some accessories. Now, upon arriving at the Gristarium in Shadowbringers, there is a Sundry Splendors Merchant here from the last expansion. These Splendors Merchants offer you all the gear from that particular city's expansion. The nice thing, though, is that it doesn't matter what classification of item it is, it will always give you the same amount of seals based on its item level. So if we go to Crypt Lurker Gear, your first instinct might be to go ahead and buy some weapons because surely they give more seals. They don't. They don't at all. 
In fact, this 280 seal ring of fending is going to give you just as many uh, as many seals as the augmented Crippler's War Axe. So when you're finding yourself capped on Poetics and you need some extra seals, go ahead and purchase these items here. And again, because you're teleporting with Etherite tickets, this costs you nothing to do. Just a little bit of time. Grand Company seals are a quick and easy way to avoid additional gill and time expenditures. Now let's talk about Grand Company turn-ins. So if you head over to your personnel officer, you want to go ahead and undertake your supply and provisioning missions. So unlike the expert delivery, which you turn in for seals, supply and provisioning supplies experience points some seals on the side as well but our primary draw is experience so we see here giant haddock dip i need to turn in three and i'll get 2.3 million experience points now at level 88 i have a maximum xp value of 10 and a half million so we are looking at almost a quarter of my entire experience bar just for doing this and these reset every single day. Now what's great about the supply tab, you can create a high quality version of this as well and that will double the amount of seals and the amount of experience you get. So instead of a quarter of an experience bar, I will get half of one. Even better, if you look here, there's something starred under the carpenter. A star doubles that value. So technically, if you were to get a high quality version of the integral grinding wheel and turn that in, you will get an entire level's worth of experience points, which is amazing. Anytime you see a star, you wanna do whatever you can to get that turned in. Now under provisioning, there is no high quality option, um, but it still gives you a very hefty experience gain. As you can see, the experience gain between these two is quite substantially different. So. While we may not get a high quality option, it is still a huge amount of experience points. But why would you care about this? There's gotta be some casual grinding way to do this, right? There is. The market board. All right, we're at the market board. Now this is a great way to go ahead and find some items on our list that may be going for very little gill. In fact, I'm pretty sure one item on this list is already gonna be very lucrative. Now, a way to check and see what our turn-ins are without actually having to go to your grand company would be under your duty tab, you'll find your timers window or control U on keyboard. This includes some really good stuff like your ventures to tell you whether or not your uh, retainers are ready. And it also tells you your mission allowance. So here we'll easily find a list of what we need to pick up to turn in. Now, personally, I have a gill spending limit. For me, if it's starred, I'm gonna be willing to, to spend a lot because it's an entire level. Uh, if it's not starred, I gotta start thinking about how much is actually worth. And then if I don't find a high quality item of decent price, no, I may not do any turn-ins at all. It's all just depending on how much you wanna spend money on. Again, you're practically buying experience points this way. So first thing we wanna check, we have something starred here. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look and find out how much this costs. So here's our integral grinding wheel. And we're gonna see it's starred with 32,000 high quality. Now, let me double check something. Yeah, my carpenter's 90 already, so I'm not gonna get anything for this. But I'm showing you for 32 grand, I would probably go ahead and pick it up just because that is a full level's worth. An entire level for 32,000 is cheap in my opinion. For those of you who are penny pinching quite a bit more, shop around. Now, without any other starred items, uh, you basically just have to go through on each one of them and figure out if there's anything else here of interest. And if I can spell right, we'd be doing great. It's not Krondike, it's Kondite. Kondrite, oh my gosh, let's just... Okay, so here we go. This is 70K. This is way outside my price range. I would not buy one of these. Even with a star, I probably wouldn't buy it, honestly. It's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit heavy. However, I know, historically, that Giant Haddock Dip 
generally goes for very, very little on the market. Yeah, look at this. 140 for normal quality. Let's see what high quality can get. 900. 2700 gil. I can go ahead and buy three of these high quality. Bang. Now moving on to the provisioning missions. We'll check here as well. Um, whoops. We'll find out pretty quickly if this is even worth our time. Uh, now all of my gatherers are already 90, so I'm not going to buy anything. But yeah, look at this. All right, so we need 20 of them. We go on the market. We got a stack of 11 and 10 combined. Probably a, about 900 after tax. A little, no, a little over 900 for, with tax. Just under a thousand. This would be very lucrative. I would go ahead and buy this, no problem. That is money, that is time saved. On the other hand, if you find anything at all that's ridiculously expensive, it might be a good idea to go ahead and gather it yourself. Maybe it's it's a little bit too cost intensive. Yeah, look at this, this is 350 for 20 of them. So now we're looking at 7,000, which again, isn't that steep, especially for provisioning missions, but if it's getting a little pricey for you, you know they sell for 350, go ahead and gather them yourself. You get experience points, um, you'll get the 20 you need, you can turn in for additional experience points. While you're there, pick up some extra and put them on the market. If it's selling too high for you, Maybe it's not selling too high for someone else, right? Go make some money. Someone's willing to pay it, obviously. All right, back at the personnel officer. We will go in here and I'm gonna go ahead and trade in my giant haddock dip. Yes, I really do. And here we go. It's gonna show you the experience you're going to be getting along with the seals, plus the high quality bonus, which is literally just in the same amount again. So we're getting twice the amount of experience points. And voila. There we are. So you'll notice we can't turn that in again today. Uh, we will have to wait for the resets. The good news is if you ever forget what your reset is under your timers, it will actually tell you when that reset is. So we got another 16 hours and change because of resets at 3 p.m. EST. Honestly, there have been entire expansions where I haven't done a single bit of questing or gathering or, or crafting. I've just gone and used the market to slowly level, just checking them day after day. Uh, people will sell things for whatever they think it's worth, and sometimes, you know, the item may not be worth much to them, but to you, that 12,000 gil item that gives you a full level, it's completely worth it. So, again, your mileage may vary. I don't know what your penny pinching situation is. However, this is a great way to use Gil to your advantage to literally transform it into experience points. A huge, huge time saver. <laughs> Now let's talk about tribal quests. Um, these used to be called Beast Tribe quests, but are now tribal quests and are a very good way to get experience points for battle classes, crafters, gatherers, you name it. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I'm going to do my best not to show anything here in the Endwalker areas just because I don't want to spoil you all. Um, however, what's really, really nice is, uh, let's see here, I got almost 7 million experience points on my summoner yet to go. Um, this is giving me just over a million at max rank. So, of course, that's after putting in quite a bit of time into it, but that breaks down to a little less than a third of a level each day because you do have an opportunity to do three different quests. Now, there is a 12 quest al allowance for the entire day, and you can break that up amongst whatever tribes you'd like. The best part about this is that it only takes like 15 minutes or so to do each individual tribe's quest. So in 15 minutes, you've gotten yourself almost a third of a level at max rank. At lower ranks, it might be more like a quarter of a level, but it's still very, very lucrative. Uh, I, I use this almost daily to go ahead and work on these side jobs that aren't necessarily anything I play, but I want to check it out, um, build towards the story, because of course, uh, since Shadowbringers, each expansion has a reward for completing all of your jobs to their maximum level in that expansion. Very good times. Uh, I definitely encourage it. Get a little bit of cash on the side to, to make up for your time. Uh, and again, using Etherite tickets, you're spending less money overall as well, teleporting around. So 
It all compounds. Now, a Realm Reborn tribal quests are a little more unique. Um, there are five of them in total. That's four for battling and one for crafting. Um, they are set to set levels. They don't change level with your class like everything starting in Heavensward does. Um, but it's, it's a way to get a little bit of experience for pushing your way through those last few levels um, to 50. The plus side is some of them give you ventures, some of them give you um, uh, some other interesting rewards. They all give you cash, which is nice. And eventually, once you've built up enough reputation, you can go ahead and buy uh, some rare dyes that aren't commonly found, as well as a couple minions and a mount. There are some housing items as well for those of you who are lucky enough to have a house. My personal opinion, I mean, if you're a completionist, probably a great, a great thing to look at. Uh, however, not super easy to get into and ultimately feels kind of a waste of efficiency. So if you're looking more bang for your buck, I would stick with the Heaven's Ward Plus tribal quest. But if you really want those rewards or you happen to have jobs in the, uh, the mid 40 range, by all means, go ahead and uh, knock out some of these quests. It won't take very long. Custom deliveries. Uh, this is actually a really lucrative way to gain experience points and gather scripts, which are used for crafters and gatherers, uh, both while leveling and at end game. It's great for gear collection and some end game crafting. Uh, basically, if you're not doing custom deliveries, you should be. So how to get to these? Uh, well, there are some quests to unlock them. I'll have to leave that up to you to find those quests. Uh, but once you do, they are in your timers window. So again, from duty to timers or control U. They show up right here, custom deliveries. They're available each week with a total of 12 turn-ins you can do. Now you are capped out at six per patron here. So you can only do six per person, um, which means you can technically max out six for two different people, or you can spread it out though, not terribly efficient. Uh, but essentially the idea is you unlock these characters, you go and you craft, gather, or fish different items, and then you turn them in for experience, or reputation, excuse me, reputation, gill, scripts, and experience points. Now, obviously, I don't have any rep to gain anymore because I've already maxed them out. Uh, but the good news is this takes five weeks and then you're done. You do this for five straight weeks per person, you will have them maxed out. And at max rank, you have a significant bonus to all the goodies you can get. And once you're at your maximum rank, uh, right here, you can see there's five hearts you actually unlock the ability to bonus. So at random, it'll choose different items that you can turn in to your custom delivery uh, recipient, and they can be bonused. Now what's great about bonuses is it actually increases the rewards you receive by 50%. So uh, let's see here, if I pull up Minago. Uh, so if we look here, she'll give us 1.3 million here for this. And if we switch back over to Zlo uh, Zloe, excuse me, 1.95. So again, 50% more, very, very significant. Um, let's see, our, my armor right now is at uh, 2.1 out of 10.8. Essentially, the math comes out to, with a bonus, you should be receiving an entire level's worth for all six turnits. Now, the good news is, for crafting at least, usually in the same area you're in, like where I have a Kurenai here, we head on over to, I am lost. <laughs> okay, if we head on over uh, straight across from her, over here to the uh, the blue merchant, uh, we should find something of interest here. Purchase items, there we go. Yep, so we've got different materials. Now you can purchase the raw components, it just takes more to make, uh, but it gives you a higher chance of actually making a high quality version or a higher collectability version of the item uh, but for me especially if you're you're late game or it doesn't really matter so much just get your straight components no problems uh, you'll find under your special recipes under custom deliveries you'll find all the people of interest and under Kur and I we are looking for 
once again. Uh, pull her back up. This custom delivery window is amazing. Uh, Kura and I is Cloud Pearls. So we look in here at Cloud Pearl, we'll see that it's four Cloud Pearl components to make one, and we need to make six of those. So we need a total of, that is not 24, that is 57 jacks. There we go. So for 9,600 gil, we go ahead and craft all that up real quick. Really, really easy. And then as you can see, even though we spent 9,600 gil, we turn in six of those, we're looking at about 15,000 gil. So we're actually profiting 6,000 gil roughly, minus your crystals, of course. Uh, but this is a phenomenal way to get experience and scripts. Now let's talk about a rare activity in the game that provides you a large amount of MGP with very little effort. I'm talking about Fashion Report. This is a weekly activity that allows you to go to redolent rows in the gold saucer, present what you're wearing based on whatever outfit design that he has uh, specified, and you receive points based on that result. Now, you can find this under your timers, of course. Here is your fashion report. This tells you how much time you have left for the week. Now, what's interesting about fashion report is that you can only turn it in Friday through Monday. So, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you'll get this screen here. It'll tell you some basic themes. You can kind of guess as to what it is, uh, and then go ahead and turn in uh, whatever outfit you have on up to four times. Now, just trying will give you 10,000 MGP. However, upon accomplishing 80 total points, um, you'll actually get an extra 50,000 MGP. Uh, that'll bring it up to a total of 60,000 MGP per week. The question though is, how do you get to 80 points? Well, good news is we've had a member of our community uh, crowdsource a lot of these different options, and we go to somebody called Kyoko Star. Now I wanna bring this over here. Kyoko Star is, uh, like I said, a very huge part of our community. Uh, they have helped demystify this process quite a bit. Uh, you can find Kyoko here on uh, Twitter and Twitch, as well as through Reddit and their Discord. But essentially what they do is they give you a couple options. Now, there is a title associated with getting 100 points, so this is what allows you to get that 100 points, the least amount of effort possible. However, there is the standard 80 points, which basically requires almost nothing uh, in most cases. Here it says 60,000 MGP. The plus is that there are some bonuses on occasion, though your pretty standard week will just be the 60,000. And it tells you, right here what all you need. Now here we can see that to get 80 points this week we need three different pieces that are dyed as well as a pair of gloves. Now you can also just go up here and look for some stuff that you have on hand that you might have in your uh, your glamour dresser or on your retainers and just go ahead and grab that stuff put it on you can present yourself and get that those 80 points as well. Now you'll see it actually tells you where to go to get the specific items that are that are shown by a Kyoko. Uh, in this case, we need to go to Gwalter. Hi, Gwalter. Now, Gwalter's, he, he takes a lot of our money. <laughs> it's, it's a really inexpensive way to, uh, to buy a lot of this gear for Fashion Report. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go grab this gear. Oh, uh, one thing that's pretty awesome. Any of this gear you have here, you don't actually have to be wearing it. You just have to glamour it. The fashion report will actually only judge what you have glamoured on, what's visible, per se. So, very awesome. But I will see you over at the Gold Saucer. Alright, we have arrived at the Gold Saucer. Let's head over to the Ethernet shard, and we're going to hop over to Wonder Square East. It'll drop us on the second floor. We just drop right off the edge here and turn around. Boop! There is Masked Rose. So this is where we actually turn in our, um, uh, this is where we ask to get judged, essentially. Uh, you can confirm to see what it is, you can present yourself, and you can review your best outfit just to see what your best score was. So, uh, as you see, we are using the Royal Vest, we have the Healer Artifact uh, Pants, and I do have the Hempen 
short gloves on. Uh, they just happen to be in my inventory, probably from a previous, a previous week for the fashion report. So this should easily get us 80 points. Present yourself for judging, and there we go. Now once again, this is a weekly activity, which is pretty amazing. So if you think about it, you know, if you do this every single week, all year, it's 52 times you've, uh, you've accomplished this. And at 60,000, I mean, you're over 3 million MGP for that year. Here we go. Oh yeah, 92, look at that. Very good. If I had the fringe boots, I might have actually hit 100 with that. <laughs> All right, and now our rewards should be poured on us. There's the 10,000 for the attempt. And there's the 50,000 for actually attaining 80 points. So a total of 60,000. Uh, the nice thing about that is, uh, you know, once again, you, you just start building up your Manderville Gold Saucer points. And eventually you'll be able to forward all those awesome mounts, uh, cool toys, a lot of fun stuff. You don't have to grind. You don't have to grind this at all. So, pretty great. Uh, when we do have the Make It Rain campaign, we end up with 90,000 per week, which is phenomenal. Now, there are other ways to get MGP fairly easily. Uh, however, there is much more of a time investment, so I will not be going over those. But this is quite literally five minutes of my time per week. So, there we are. I sincerely hope you learned something new while watching this video. The tips and tricks, once again, are my own personal observations, and by all means, if you have your own tips or tricks, please leave them in the comments below. In the future, I will have other opportunities to explore different types of video content, so I hope you're here for all of those as well. If you like what you saw, go ahead and put a like, subscribe, show your support. It's the only way we can get more eyes on this content. And as always, hope you're having a great day, take care, and I'll catch you next time.